Hey everyone, it's Chelsea here to give you the um, horoscope and card reading for June. So I'll get right into it. June is busy. I have a lot of stuff written down. Um, so I'm just going to quickly run through everything. Uh, so first on June 5th, we have Sun square Neptune um, in 14 degrees Gemini and Pisces. So that could be um, really um, daydreamy in a bad way, kind of not really being in touch with reality, just kind of head in the clouds, um, even excessive laziness. Um, so um, and it might it might dip into your career because sun is very much so career. Um, it's your true self and hopefully you're with your career you're doing something that's true to yourself. Um, so be careful. Try not to over inflate your worth. Try not to um, underestimate your worth as well. Um, try to try to stay grounded however you can. Um, yeah, I, I would say just try to stay grounded mostly. Um, next up on June 8th through the 11th, um, we have Jupiter going direct at 13 degrees Libra. Yes, I don't know why I'm that excited, but I just like things going direct. I don't, I'm not really keen on retrograde situations. <laughs> like, I just feel like, why? <laughs> but yeah, so Jupiter's going direct. Um, so that should start to bring some results, some positive manifestations of whatever house Libra is in for you. Um, or whatever aspect Libra makes to your sun or moon. Um, and that, it's, it's so, the reason why I say it's going direct 8th through 11th is really because it's, it's staying stationary. So when it's stationary, it's going to have a larger impact on your life in that moment. And then when it goes direct, it's just going to be like business as usual. Whereas when it was retrograde, it was kind of asking you to work for like future awards, which nobody likes that. <laughs> um, so anyway, June 9th through 11th, uh, we have Venus sextile Mars um, in two degrees two to four degrees Taurus and Cancer. So Venus is in Taurus, um, Mars is in Cancer, and it's uh, they kind of just stay within those three degrees, two, three, and four um, on those three days. So it's a great time to be sexy. It's not that strong of an aspect, but you know, if you want to update your look, if you want to take any action in terms of aesthetics or even business relationships, um, ask somebody out on a date, um, or, you know, go forth with that new partnership. Now's the time. It's a good time for that. Um, June 14th, we have Mercury square Neptune. Um, Mercury's in 13 degrees Gemini and Neptune is in 13 degrees Pisces. So again, getting carried away, this time with your thought processes. So you may be, um, not necessarily argumentative, but you may be thinking, like way too out the box. Of course they say, you know, always think outside the box, but you may be thinking so unrealistically, you may start to make plans or sign contracts that you really shouldn't. Um, you So you just wanna be aware of that. Read the fine print, read it. Slow down that Gemini energy and read the fine print of whatever you're doing. It's funny because I think, I, I might be signing contracts around that time now that I think of it. Um, so yeah, just slow down, read the fine print, um, be aware, be knowledgeable, try to be, I'm not saying be as logical as possible because um, it's going to, like when, you, when you're doing a square, because Gemini is logical, when you're doing a square, if you try to like do too much of one sign in the square, it's going to hurt what the other sign is doing. So if you try and be too logical, you may miss out on the magic of um, Pisces and it may not work in your favor. But if you try and be too dreamy and spiritual and just head in the clouds, you may miss something that was so obvious. Um, so you don't want to do that. So just um, be aware. Maybe the cards will give more insight, but just be aware, um, especially with contracts. Um, and anything with communication, you don't want to um, say something that would offend others. Like I said before, I don't think it's argumentative because 
um, it's not Mars, you know, you're not really trying to start fights. Neptune not, is not really an argumentative planet, Mercury is not really an argumentative planet, but it's about communication. And you may say something that you didn't realize would offend somebody else because your head is in the clouds and you're not, it's, I don't, maybe you're not being realistic or like you're not, um, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe you guys get what I'm saying. We're like, you're not really thinking clearly about what you're saying. You you might have a Trump moment, you know? I don't like Trump, but his his views aside, the way he communicates just isn't really working for anyone. So you may have something like a Trump moment. Um, shout out if you're a Trump fan. Not actually shout out, but like comment below if you're a Trump fan. I just want to know if we have any. You never know. You really never know. <laughs> uh, no shade, I'm just, I'm just saying. Anyway, June 14th, right after this kind of difficult aspect, we have um, a moon trine to Aquarius. So again, comment below, let me know if these moon trines really mean something to you guys. I feel like, especially for anyone who has a lot of cancer in their chart or like a strong moon, for example, um, here's some, what's that mean that they go like that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some more solo of information. Um, arguably, the most important planet in your chart, or one of the most important planets um, in your chart, is the one with the highest degree. So for me, I have a Mercury in Gemini. So that's like my most important, sorry, sorry, I didn't say that right. I have a Mercury in Gemini to the 29th degree. <laughs> so that's like my most important planet. It's the planet that people kind of, uh, in a way like know most about me. It's just like my most important planet. You can get a lot of information from that and it, it, it's kind of like, I don't want to say it's my chart ruler because there's other important planets. For example, I'm a Libra rising and the planet of Libra is Venus. So somebody could equally say that Venus is like my most important planet. On the other hand, I'm a Cancer Sun and so somebody could say that the moon is my most important planet. Um, so uh, those, those sorts of things are kind of interesting to know and, and maybe even helpful, especially if you happen to have like um, a planet in the 29th degree in your first house. So then you know like, okay, I should really pay attention to this. Um, forgot why I said that. Oh yeah, yeah, I was, I was saying like if, <laughs> if your moon happens to be in the 29th degree or you have a lot of cancer energy or you have um, your chart ruler in, as the moon, then these moon trines may mean more to you than somebody else. Um, even if you have your Jupiter in cancer, um, I don't know, anyway. June 15th, roll it on down. We have Sun oppose Saturn. Um, so we actually are going to have two oppositions to Saturn this month and the way I, ter the way I interpret the ephemeris, um, this month is the moon actually makes an aspect to one of those planets, um, during each opposition. So for the first opposition, when the sun opposes Saturn, um, the, I feel like the, the sun favors the moon. So the sun will be in Gemini and Saturn will be in Sagittarius. Like I said before, the opposition is not like a terrible aspect. I feel like I'm only saying this because I'm a Libra, but like the opposition is not a terrible aspect. You may have to work, but like you have to work to get a lot of good things in life. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I feel like the sun favors the Sorry, the moon favors the sun because the moon will make a trine to the sun um, during the aspect. Again, it's fleeting. All the moon does is um, make fleeting aspects. Um, they just they just give a little bit of punch um, and they materialize things. So you're more likely to see evidence of what's going on in the heavens, what's going on in the energies, in the ether. <laughs> I should, I'm sorry, I'm gonna Google what ether means because I don't know. And I'm, I'm a chemist, so like ether means something totally different to whatever else everybody else is saying. So I'm just, I'm gonna Google it for you guys and next month I'll let you know. Oh, by the way, next month is my birthday. Um, but this month, uh, if you're watching this in June, is Michael's birthday. So um, I don't know if that was supposed to be a secret, but whatever. June 11th is uh, Michael's birthday. So give him a little birthday present or whatever you wanna do. Oh, and shout out, I don't know who gave this to me. Shout out, this is so cute. I was, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry, Michael just gave this to me and I, I think it was a customer or like a friend, I don't know. But they gave it to me, it's like a, it's a necklace with like peridot in it. You know how I suck at this, but whatever. It's so cute, thank you. I wear it every day and never take it off, thank you. Anyway, um, moving on, <laughs> moving on, um, where were we? I was talking about Michael's birthday. Um, I talked about Sun opposed Saturn. Uh, now I'm talking about June 19th, which is Mercury opposed Saturn. So yeah, so um, like I said, there's going to be two opposites to Saturn. The Sun and Mercury are kind of moving. Um, they have like a similar speed. Mercury's faster and they're in the same sign for the majority of the month. And they make a conjunction soon enough like it's actually on the 21st but um so first the sun makes an opposition to saturn then mercury makes an opposition to saturn um and when mercury makes opposition to saturn the moon actually favors saturn because the moon makes a trine to saturn um like i said it's fleeting but i would just say if you want to if you're having trouble with the energy of the day i would tap into what the moon is favoring um because trine aspects are always helpful um, so yeah, um, so I should explain that more. Sun opposed Saturn shows that you need to work more on your true self. Um, and I could definitely attest to this because, you know, I keep saying like, I am one thing or like, I, I keep kind of projecting this image of myself, but my actions are completely different. Completely. Like, a hundred percent different from who I say I am. So it's, I'm, it's, it's gonna take a lot of work, which is Saturn, um, to build the foundation to really be who I want to be and like be real with myself. I can either change who I want to be, or I could work towards the current version of who I want to be. It's it's just a decision that has to be made, um, and so that's what that aspect is like. So um, on that day for June fifteenth, you may want to focus more on the Sun part. Who do you want to be? Who are you truly? Um, who do you think you are? You know. Um, as opposed to reworking the way you do it. Um, and then on the 19th, when Mercury opposes Saturn, um, yeah, sorry. The when Mercury opposes Saturn, you want to work more on how, <clears throat> sorry, how will you be that person who you want to be? And uh, use Mercury to build a good foundation, to build a good plan, to build a structure. I was thinking the other day like, oh, you know, I have this project and like I keep saying I want to do this project and that project and uh, my biggest excuse for the longest was that I didn't have time. That was my biggest excuse. Um, but I just graduated. Um, check out the regalia. So I should have had this all year long, but I got it and then I lost it and I bought it again after I graduated. So anyway, um, but yeah, um, so I graduated I have all this time, all this time to do what I have to do and nothing has got done. And that was a wake up call for me <laughs> that, I'm, you know, I'm like, I'll talk. Um, and it's sad, but you know, you, you realize these things and then you go to work. So I told myself, you know what, if you really want to get this done, create a schedule, make a list, get it done. Because anytime I really want to get something done, I make a list. I like, I create a schedule. I make sure it gets done. Um, that's something these last four years have shown me. And also just like the last couple of months, like they've been kind of hectic. So like anytime I had a lot to do, I was like, okay, make a list you know, figure out the times that you're going to do this, 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 that, and you know, when it really means something to you, you'll do it. But sometimes when we have our passion projects, there's no deadline, there's no due date, they're just things that we think up and we want to do. And a lot of times, you know, for example, like if, if you want to be a doctor, right, then the deadlines are coming at you. They're coming at you. You don't have to think like, oh, when am I gonna get my degree? Like, you get your degree as soon as you leave high school, and then after that, you go straight to med school. You may have a gap year of research or some other thing, you know, people, I mean, that's natural, but like, you get your degree right away. <laughs> and like, all the deadlines are so clear, and they're so, um, all the deadlines are just, just very, um, they're in your face. 
it's up to you to keep up with those deadlines. That's how that field is. If you're trying to get into a more creative field or if you're in that field already, it's up to you to set those deadlines. It's up to you to say, you know what? I want an album release now. I want my next art collection done by the end of the month so I could sell it at this festival coming up. Even if there is no festival coming up, because even that is a deadline, you know what I mean? Even if there is no festival coming up, I want this art collection done by May so I could sell it and like say that I've done this much by May and that to me because I don't I don't really have that that to me is like a superpower almost it's it's just it's it shows true grit true drive because I've been realizing I'm sorry this is story time this has nothing to do with horse I'm sorry but I've been realizing that like I don't really do anything unless I'm being unless my toes are put to the fire so if you tell me oh deadline in two weeks I'm like okay but if you tell me deadline tomorrow, I'm up all night making a masterpiece. And I don't recommend that. I don't, it's it's not a recipe for success. <laughs> but I, that happens to me. So um, I think June 15th and June 19th, um, they're good times to kind of, you know, really flesh out how you're gonna do what you wanna do and how you're gonna be who you wanna be. If you're not on track right now, these are times to get it together. Um, even even the Neptune, I know the Neptune aspects are hard this month. There's only one Neptune aspect. Oh, no, no, two. Two squares. Um, so I know they're hard this month. But, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, it might be able to give you some insight. It might be able to um, give you a better idea of who you are. So I was going to say this, too. With the sun opposition Saturn, when you're trying to find out who you truly are and the, and the moon is favoring the sun, um, I personally really love the law of attraction. I love it. There's, if you, I, I'm a slow reader, so I use audiobooks, don't judge me. But like, <laughs> on, um, so if you like movies and documentaries, which I do, uh, you can watch The Secret, which is on Netflix and I think might be on YouTube. Maybe it might be like in Spanish with like English subtitles. I don't know, but the secret is a good kind of snapshot of the law of attraction. And then also, um, there's this audio book by Jack Canfield. It's not read by Jack Can Canfield, but it's by Jack Canfield called The Law of Attraction. Um, it's great, and it also has like steps that you can do. Also, um, the psycho the neuropsychology of self discipline. That's also an audio book online with like a um, handbook for like how to achieve your dreams. Um, not so much the neuropsychology of self-discipline, but maybe more so the law of attraction, but both together, they can help you realize what do you truly want to do? What are you willing to work for? Which I think is like two different questions in a way, but like having that kind of clarity is really key. If you don't have purpose, you're living a purposeless life. What more can I say? Anyway, June 21st, we have Sun conjunct Mercury, 29 degrees Gemini, finally. Um, so yeah, that can that can kind of get creative juices flowing for sure. Um, if you have anything doing in the media and communication and writing, anything to do with your hands, um, your it's going to especially if it has to do with your career. You're gonna get you're gonna be received well during that time. Um, so you definitely want to like release things during that time if you if that's what you do, um, or even start projects during that time. It's just favorable overall. I mean, you might go overboard, but I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't really see conjunctions or oppositions as that bad. Um, but take what I say with a grain of salt, you know what I'm saying? Let the, we'll let the cards figure out the rest. Um, but yeah, so Sun conjunct Mercury, great time to be creative. If you have a career in a creative field, this will definitely be like a little energizer shot. So yeah, it's kind of like a five hour energy drink. Like, it could be good if used well, but it could also feel like you just took a shot of crack. I don't know. So anyway, June 23rd. Moon trying another moon trying to um, Jupiter, and this time the moon trying is in Gemini, um, and both moon trines are in um, fourteen degrees, because uh, Jupiter or actually thirteen degrees, because Jupiter is in thirteen degrees. Okay, now we have June twenty fifth Mars square Jupiter, so um, 
Mars will be in 13 degrees Cancer. It is a square. Um, for me, I don't see it as that bad because I have Sun Square Ascendant. Uh, my Sun is in Cancer, my Ascendant's in Libra, so I just feel like it should be good for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. But no, um, for the general population. Um, Mars Square Jupiter. Um, be careful not to like... I see this I see this aspect as like you like um, spending all your money gambling like you're trying to get some luck and you're like being really aggressive about like trying to be lucky and then it backfires and you lose out in some way that's how I see it um, so I would just say cool your heels as always Jupiter is not a malefic planet it's a benefic planet so it's not really going to like bite you in the butt but Mars is a malefic planet so um, I would just say try not to be too aggressive um, try not to act impulsively and emotionally because um, uh, Mar uh, cancer is an emotional planet um, an emotional sign um, and Mars is aggressive um, and impulsive um, Jupiter um, in Libra it's kind of fair-minded but I think with the square to Mars you may think you're being fair-minded and not realize that you're actually being emotional so I don't know it's just gonna be a little tough but uh, probably won't last that long let me see June 25th yeah it's not it's not gonna last that long like Mars will quickly move away um, oh yeah, and right after that, um, like the very next day on June 26th, you have Mars trine Neptune in 14 degrees Cancer in Pisces. So it's like you come out of a square right into a trine in Neptune, um, which will actually be helpful for ones. I know all these other aspects of Neptune have been like, head in the clouds in the worst way. <laughs> but this one should actually help you. Um, and... You may you may do things that like you may do um, illogical things. You may act impulsively. You may act on emotion, but it'll actually help you out. And they like your dreams can come true if you act on them on that kind of day. Uh, okay, so now we're gonna do the card. Somebody commented, "Thank you." I should have ooh, I should have like remembered their name. I'm so sorry. Somebody commented and said <laughs> that they do want to have two cards. So I'm gonna do that. I'm shuffling, shuffling. Wish I had like a machine that I could just put this in and it'll shuffle it for me because I'm not the best shuffler. It's just that like these cards are so huge. They're so huge. All right, all right. Enough whining and moaning and complaining. Okay, so I'm gonna try and shuffle them after each. Hey everyone, I'm back. I am about to pull a card. Um, sorry, like, you know how like my computer, I mean my camera just kind of falls out sometimes. But before I forget, um, I have readings on Michael's website. I have a couple of readings. I think you have like five options. You can ask me one question. You could ask me three questions. You could Skype with me for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Or 10 minutes or 15 something like that um, my readings range from like 18 to 55 dollars I think um, they're much cheaper than like most of my brother's readings because um, I'm his little sister <laughs> but yeah I just want to let you guys know if you guys want some extra guidance throughout the month or um, you just want to hang out with me you know I like that too. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just want to let you guys know um, and then I will get into this reading. So like I said, I'm going to pull two cards like the person commented. I wish I actually knew who it was. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so I'll start with Aries. Aries, your card for right now, while you're watching this, right now, is Seven of Fire. Is it going to do the thing? Oh, it's doing the thing. Almost, almost. Oh, it's it's gonna do it's gonna do it. Yay, okay, cool. So that's you, seven to five. It says defend your beliefs and decisions, stand your ground, choose your battles wisely. Okay, maybe we'll do the thing again. I think I have to do this. Ugh. 
whatever. Well, that's what it says. Um, so, okay, cool. I think um, whatever, th whatever intuitive insight you felt during watching this video, um, go with it, you know? Um, defend your beliefs and decisions. Yeah, I don't see you getting into much fights, but if you do feel kind of combative, relax. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So now, for the next 30 days, Ace of Fire, okay, okay. I really like when, like, you get a card that matches your element. I like it. Ace of Fire, an exciting new opportunity. Career advancement, change your life now. This is hot. If you look at this guy, he's smiling so smugly. He's like in a field of like, you know, flowers. But he's smiling. Let me see if I could. Maybe if I put it on my face. Who knows? Okay, yeah. He's smiling so smugly. It's like he knew it was going to happen. Um, so yeah, whatever good feeling you have about your career, about your life direction, your life path right now, go forth, charge forth. You know it's going to work out, just go with it. You know, it's saying an exciting new opportunity is waiting for you. Um, maybe it has something to do with Jupiter going direct this month. Career advancement and change your life now. That is what's up. Okay. So that was Aries. Um, now we're going to do Taurus. For right now, we have King of Earth. Again, I love it when you get your element. King of Earth, generous, professional, responsible, and practical. A successful time. Confidently accept opportunities you're offered. The Midas touch. Very interesting that they said that because right when I saw this, right when I saw professional and uh, the Midas touch, even before they said the, the Midas touch kind of confirmed what I was feeling, but um, the sun is moving into your second house, which is like your house, if that makes sense. Um, but it's wealth, you know, it's money, it's like gains for who you are. On the one hand, it's inheritance, but it's also your wealth and resources. So you may be coming into, I mean, now is just a good time to light up your resources, right? So, um, yeah, whenever you watch this, um, you should be... Good things should be coming soon. Whatever you do should be really prosperous. And you should be reaping the rewards of that prosperity. So you should be, you know, if you have a business, your profits should be coming in soon. Okay, so that was cool. Um, now, we're going to do Taurus for the next 30 days. Uh, okay. Ace of Fire again. I shuffled it. I swear to God, I shuffled it. Um, like I said, I don't like repeats. Michael loves them. I don't like them. But um, <laughs> Ace of Fire. Um, good things though. It's good. So that's nice. Um, exciting new opportunity, career advancement, change your life now. Again, you may want to see what Jupiter's doing in your chart. Um, and this guy does look like he he saw it coming. Even your previous card showed you that it was coming. So the sun in your second house might be giving you something that you were expecting. So yeah, um, on the other hand, I'm trying to see what career activity is going on in your chart. Of course, wherever the sun is, that's like a kind of um, nice indicator for what you could be doing with your career. Um, people tend to have Mercury ruled. Um, Mercury rules careers, but not all the time. Um, but yeah, career advancement. Try and um, look for new opportunities in your career, whether that's going for a new career or just um, or just um, finding new opportunities in your career, like maybe moving to a new place to work. Okay, Gemini. Happy birthday, Gemini, by the way. Um, I'm shuffling as, as you guys. I'm going to shuffle on camera so you see what I'm doing. I usually do that really cool shuffle where it's like all the cards are going at once, like, but they're kind of big and new, so I can't do that. Okay, Gemini. What's up? What's up? Eight of Fire. Okay, at least it's not a repeat. Eight of Fire. <laughs> Eight of Fire. All right, events moving at a fast pace. 
the laser over many things happening at once. I love how everything's going well. Um, okay, events happening at a fast pace, delays are over, many things happening at once. Makes sense, because the sun is coming into, like, your first house, or it's being, it's, you might have a solar return, or you're just having sun conjunct moon. And Gemini is a very fast planet. Not only that, but Gemini, um, the sun is in Gemini, and also Mercury is in Gemini. Um, so yeah, things are going fast, and you like it, and that's how you work, and that's great. Keep it up, you know, um... Whatever you're working at, keep it up. Whatever fire you have right now, keep it up. Keep burning. Whatever inspires you to work the way you're working right now, keep it up. Keep it up. Um, delays are over. You know what I mean? This looks like a magic wand. Actually, like, th six magic wands. It's probably eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They have, like, they have one big one, two medium ones. Three small ones, two extra small ones. I don't know, but that's great. You know, things are coming through for you. All right. Uh, that was your first one, right? Damn. Okay, that was your first one. Shoot, shoot. Damn. Okay, shit. I forgot. I'm sorry. And so, like, <laughs> if this is your third card, then whatever. <laughs> whatever. Okay, second card for Gemini. What was that? That was... Uh, no, I think that was your second card because you had the Ace of, of Fire. Wow. Okay, well, that's how fast things are happening. <laughs> no, no, I think you had the Ace of Fire. No, no, that was for Taurus. Okay, I'm sorry. We're just, you know what? Extra card for Gemini. Fine. Extra card for Gemini. Who cares? Bam! Ten of Fire. Everybody's getting these Fire cards. Very nice. Too much work. <laughs> Except, I don't know why it's so funny to me. Except help from others. Life is out of balance. Stress-related health concerns. Okay, so considering your last card where it's like things are moving so fast, um, and I was like, go with that drive. Um, maybe you want to relax a little bit. I'm trying to think if you have any, anything to, I don't think there's anything in Taurus. Yeah, nothing in your 12th house. But um, once you feel overwhelmed, fall back. I kind of see this as like with the last card that was like, go, go, go. And that was supposed to be your momentary card. So in that moment, yeah, seize the moment, get it, you know, and, and blaze forward. But once that moment is over for the next 30 days, relax, fall back. Um, don't overwork yourself. I kind of see this as like Gemini pulling an all-nighter, you know, like staying up to write like a 50 page essay with like five cups of coffee and like you know that's not necessary don't do that <laughs> don't do that um but um yeah just like um accept help from others um which is also something okay just this is also some free info uh not astrology related but whatever i think a gemini would 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 um appreciate this um Robert Greene, he's a genius. He wrote um, the 48 Laws of Power uh, along with like a bunch of other great books. I think he's coming out with another book on human nature, which like I would read if I wasn't such a slow reader. Um, and one of the laws, I actually have it posted here on my vision board. <laughs> I want to like recite it exactly. Um, make other people, oh wait, that's the wrong one. Hold on come to you yes get others to do the work for you but always take the credit i don't like the laws of power um i like the laws of seduction which he, he wrote as well but it's important and i know that these laws are important so i'm trying to incorporate them into my life what does it mean though get other people to do the work for you i see gemini and definitely more so virgo but like Gemini, you, you can have like one of two different kinds of Gemini. Gemini can have that like really bustly creative energy where they feel like, oh, like I'm the only one who has the smarts to do this, so I want to do every last thing myself. That is a powerless situation, Gemini. What you want to do, especially since you're the mastermind and you can like kind of manipulate people with your words, let's be real, you want to ascend 
transcend you want to be above it okay you want to manipulate not I don't want to say manipulate it has such a bad um, connotation but you want to get other people to work for you and when you do that you can take the credit yeah it could work in your favor you can get other people to do the work that you want them to do so even though you may fear that they won't do it the way you want them to you could just tell them do it like this and it'll come out good enough you know what I mean um, it's kind of like if you think about like fashion designers they start off making the dresses themselves designing it themselves sewing it themselves when they get really big and famous they can't do that they have to give it to other young fashion designers to sew it even though they may make the designs or maybe they get so famous that somebody else has to start making the designs they just approve them and they may make edits like i want that to have a shorter hemline i want that to have brighter colors you know things like that you have to like in order to in order to gain power and not work yourself out too much work you have to just kind of delegate some of the menial tasks to other people um or else you may have some stress related health concerns and we don't want that gemini life is out of balance that sucks okay cancer cancer i gotta keep track I don't know if you saw the Gemini or if you just skipped straight to the answer, but like I lost track of the two card situation. They may have had a third card and I'll, I'll never know until I play it back. There's a lot of things I never know until I play it back. Like how like busted I look. <laughs> then I'm like, whatever, it's, it's done. Okay, Cancer, the moon, ooh. Oh, that's something else I forgot. I'm ashamed that I um, see myself as quote-unquote astrologer and I never tell you guys when the full moon and new moon is. It's serious. I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's serious. Especially since I'm a Cancer, like, sorry. I pointed it out this time, but I forgot to say it. So there's going to be a new moon on June 24th. I feel like if you're at all into astrology, you could find this, you know, you don't even have to be into astrology to know when the new moon and full moon is. You just look up at the sky. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Sorry. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, full moon on June 9th. New moon on June 24th. The full moon is in Sagittarius. And the new moon is in Cancer. Okay. Moon. This is so cool because this is your sign. Um, Archangel Haniel. Okay. Oh, sorry. I also forgot. Um, for Gemini, I know, sorry, this is going to totally mess up, like, the numbers of, like, the timing, whatever, sorry. Um, Rhyolite, for Gemini, I might, I don't know how we're going to do this, I don't know how we're going to work this out, but whatever, sorry. Okay, the moon, Archangel Haniel. <laughs> Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. Cancer. Right now in this moment as you're watching this, if you've received good news recently, just just accept it. You know what I mean? If somebody's saying something that sounds too good to be true, um, unless it's like a really weird business scam where they're like, give us your money and like we'll flip it for you and you know that that's, a, uh, that that's not what's going to happen, then don't do that. But if somebody's giving you really good news, like if you're struggling to believe in something, um, for example, me personally, I've been getting a lot of good news recently. Like the astrology of my chart is about to take off and like like I said before I struggle sometimes just accept it you know what I mean just accept it it is what it is important psychic uh, important psychic insights don't ignore them if you're having trouble pick up amethyst um, I'll flash it to you guys because I like flashing my rocks poop uh, uh, I'm getting better at this Wait, hold on. I think you have to like, oh Lord, there we go. <laughs> Amethyst, okay. So, this is really good for psychic intuition. There's a time where like anytime I put Amethyst under my pillow, I had a dream. And this was a time when like I wasn't having dreams a lot. Uh, but anyway, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back. Um, I even see this as like go for what you want like usually a fear that holds you back it's different for everyone but just you know like things like oh I don't think I can do this or like 
you know, I don't know if this is for me. When you have like so many signs telling you like, it's for you, go for it, this is your time. Don't ignore it, you know what I mean? The universe is just like, I don't want to compare a universe, the universe to humans, but um, no, it, it, the universe like will respond to your vibration. If you doubt yourself, the universe will be like, okay, well I guess she's not really ready for it, so we won't do it. Like for example, if you want to be a lawyer, and you're just like, I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I'm smart enough. I don't know, I don't know. The universe will be like, but you're being given signs like, oh, here's a scholarship to do law school. Um, here's a free course to like ace the LSAT. And you're just like, I don't know, I don't know. The universe will be like, okay, I guess she doesn't want it. Let's just like quit, you know? Okay, so that was your moment, right? That was your... Sorry. I always hear something that like scares the crap out of me. Anyway, I think that was your first moment one. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. Some people may have like three different cards going on, you know? I'm sorry. Like, this is so confusing for me. Like, I just forget. Whoever made that suggestion, we may have to rethink it. When I look through this again, if I, if I did like three different cards, we may have to rethink this. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like since I started I can't stop okay three of fire for the next 30 days okay three of fire abundance things look very good have patience at this time make long-term plans so those the um Saturnian energy will definitely help you um Mars was in your sign for like towards the end I think yeah was it was it for the whole month? Yeah, Mercury was in Gemini, Mars was in Cancer, right. So, um, yeah, Mars spends a bit of time in Cancer this month, so, um, look into that. Um, although, it's saying have patience, make long-term plans, and Mars is more so impulsive, but it may give you the energy to kind of, um, make these plans, um, to think about your future, um, and go get that abundance, you know what I mean? Um, but have patience. I see that as meditation. Things look very good and don't lose hope. Remember the last card that was like, that psychic intuition, uh, that psychic intuition don't ignore it. Uh, this card is saying that things will work out, you know, for the next 30 days if you just stop ignoring your psychic intuition. Okay. Huh, Leo. Leo. Leo, I hope you're on fire. The North Node is transiting through your space, you know? Hope faded events are catching you left and right. All right, Leo. Leo. Okay, Leo. The Empress, okay. Archangel Gabriel lavish abundance everything everybody like i haven't seen a bad card except for like the gemini one where it was like relax sorry anyway um lavish abundance give birth to your dreams wow give birth nurture yourself and others obviously if you're trying to have a baby it's a good time um she's actually carrying a baby that looks like a adult almost but give birth to your dreams um archangel gabriel is telling you to um not fear like it's gonna happen plus with the north node you know uh transiting through your sign um you have reason to believe that fated events will happen um things that are meant to happen you know things that we can't explain but will happen for you um lavish abundance give birth to your dreams nurture yourself in others you can't help others if you can't help yourself in a way I think, I don't know if I said that right. Um, but yeah, you get the gist. Okay, that was your first card. Now we're going on to your second card for the next 30 days. I feel like the first card can help you with whatever you're going through right now at this moment. Second card can give you some general life advice for the next 30 days, but also take it how you want. Take it how you want. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> Knight of Earth. So you got like two major cards, Empress and the Knight of Earth. Um, loyal, dedicated, honorable, kind, 
time to buckle down and get things done. Honor your commitments, a guardian angel. So this is definitely Earth energy, night of Earth. Um, hmm, work. Um, since Mars is in your 12th house, you may feel a bit lazy. Um, try to shake that off, you know? Um, and get things done. Honor your commitments. When you feel the need to relax, you may feel more lax about your commitments. Don't do that. Commit to what you want, commit to what you said you were going to do, and do it. Um, a guardian angel. So I see this um, as seeing you through. It's funny because this horse has like crazy hair, which is totally Leo. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice time to work. Um, resist temptation to not work, you know? Um, a guardian angel is here for you to get things done. Uh, for your favor or in your favor. Okay, Virgo. Hope I'm going in order. Virgo comes after Leo. And then Libra. Okay, Virgo, bam. Three of. <coughs> Three of fire. I shuffled. Really don't like. <laughs> I really don't like repeats. It makes me feel like I didn't shuffle enough. Anyway, abundance, things look very good. Um, have patience, make long-term plans. Good for you, Virgo. Things are going well for you. Um, but no, like, things are going well. Um, this feels like um, things are going well because you deserved it, because you've worked hard, and now you're reaping um, the benefits of what you deserve, you know? Um, have patience. Um, make long-term plans. So yeah, if you feel like you should be reaping any rewards, they're coming. They're coming very soon. Um, okay, so now your second card, Virgo. Ooh, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Ten of water. First water card for the next 30 days. A contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met. Trustworthy relationships. That's nice. Um, Cause you can take it easy, you could be breezy. When you're around people you trust, you don't have to have your guard up, you know? Um, you could just be breezy. And I'm sure people really enjoy that. Um, family life. Uh, that means, what's your fourth house? For Virgo? Libra Scorpius. Is it Sag? I think it is Sag. Yeah. And so you're making aspects of Saturn. So like, then Saturn is in your fourth house. Is that? Is it, it is right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, if you would like to, um, restructure your family life, now's a good time to work on any broken family relationships if you have them. Um, and yeah, it's just um, overall good, contented and rewarding family life, your emotional and material needs are met. Um, so that to me also says that financially things will be okay. Um, trustworthy relationships. Utilize that Saturnian energy to um, fix anything that's broken. Um, or even just, you know, um, strengthen whatever bonds you have um, in your family. So that was Virgo. Now we're on to Libra. Hey, Libra. <laughs> okay, Libra, for right now, this moment. Bam, oh, ow, that hurt. Okay, that was paper clip. I mean, paper cut. Okay, 10 of fire, too much work. Accept help from others. Life is out of balance, stress-related health concerns. So you're overworking yourself. Um, so funny because like my moon is in Gemini, my rising is in Libra, and I feel like I'm lazy as hell. I just <laughs> I feel like I don't work enough all the time. Um, but accept help from others. Uh, life is out of balance, stress-related health concerns. Um, especially for you, Libra, think about the direction you're taking your life in. If life is if your life is out of balance, it's probably because you're moving in the wrong direction. If you're moving in the right direction, you won't really have a trouble with balance because you're naturally very balanced. So 
Um, see where you are right now. <sighs> Sorry, and check to see that um, all is well with you in your heart and soul. Um, again, when Sun makes um, some aspects to Saturn, you may um, you know, benefit from that. Did you guys see my eye twitch? I felt it. Maybe you didn't see it. <laughs> it's just that that's a sign of overworking and I'm just like whatever. Because I also didn't sleep a lot last night but that's because I missed my flight. That really wasn't my fault, so. <laughs> and then I came back and slept a whole bunch. Okay. Anyway, Libra. The wheel. This guy looks like Brad Pitt. Okay. Archangel Michael. A time of positive change. A situation suddenly moves forward. Fortune is on your side. Okay, so that's really good. Like, I, I don't know, like, everybody's been receiving, like, amazing stuff this this month. Um, I didn't really ex expect that from the astrology of the month, but hey. I remember last month I was like, oh my god, the astrology is so bomb, and, like, people's cards were like, relax, you're not doing things right. <laughs> so I don't know. Because um, it affects everybody differently, you know. People are far more individual than like a mass reading. But anyway, let it help you however it helps you. A time of positive change, situation suddenly moves forward, fortune is on your side. I have to say, um, the, the wheel here is the wheel of astrology. Uh, let's do this. Okay, maybe if I move a little closer. So yeah, the wheel is the wheel of astrology. Um, so I think you really want to follow whatever the astrology says to do this month. Um, you know, if it says move left, then move left. If it says move right, move right. If it says stop and wait, stop and wait. Because the fortune is on your side. Um, and things are moving forward. So if you move with the energy, it's going to move forward for you. Okay, so that was Libra. We're halfway through. Right now we're doing Scorpio. What's up, Scorpio? How's it going? I'm fine and you? I'm good. <laughs> okay. I think, yeah, when I first started astrology, I always thought that, like, I would be with a Scorpio because it's, um, trying cancer. But I don't think that anymore. <laughs> Sorry. It's just that like I have I don't have a lot of feminine energy in my like chart. For real, for real. Anyway, okay. Six of Earth. Six of Earth. Mm, okay. Trying to work with this camera. Okay. Six of Earth. Gifts of money, time, or effort. New career opportunities, or student loan, or paying off debts. Do that Google search that you've been wanting to do that's related to your job. Um, I don't even know when this... I think it stopped after I showed you the card. So yeah. Um, new career opportunities. Um, yeah, whatever thing that you've been thinking about doing related to your career, act on it. Whether that's like a passion project or like some additional research. Um, go ahead and do that. Gifts of money, time, or effort. All of which are invaluable. Time is money, as we all know. Um, think about getting pizza today. New career opportunities, receiving a loan or paying off debts. That's also really great. So that's like a weight lifted. Um, so that's really great. I feel great for you. Um, yeah. There's a fairy coming in, so it may seem like, you know, definitely the the, the world is like, um, the energies are in your favor, the universe energies are in your favor, but it, all, it may also seem like magical, like you had like a fairy godmother come in and like work things out for you. Okay, <clears throat> so this is your 30 day, ooh, 30 day cards.
Okay. Aid of Fire. I think this is the third time. No, I don't know. Whatever. Events moving at a fast pace. Um, delays are over. Many things happening at once. Um, Mars is trying your sign, so um, whatever you started doing at the beginning of the month may just kind of snowball effect and like get bigger and better as time goes on. Because um, delays are over. That's always great. Um, huh. Yeah, I see this as magic wand, so kind of like um, things kind of appearing as you want them. So like if you if you do know anything about the law of attraction, um, the universe may be working extra fast for you. Which is always nice. Okay, so now after Scorpio we have Sagittarius. Sag, Eight of Water. Okay, a desire to move on, the search for something more meaningful, spiritual and emotional growth. I see this is a good uh, card. Um, if you have dead weight, um, full moons are a great time to let go of them. If you want to really let go of them in a very ceremonial fashion, if you will. Like a breakup, you know? Full moons are a great time to really let it go. Just kind of open that palm and let it all fall out. Um, the search for something more meaningful is really good to begin on a new moon, because that's like the start of new beginnings. Um, and spiritual and emotional growth can happen at any time. Um, but that is for the, the right now reading. Um, so now we're going to go to the 30 days, see if we can get some more insight on that. Ooh. Okay. The Chariot! Okay. Archangel Metatron. Huh. An important achievement, self-discipline and willpower, public recognition. That is 11th house. Public recognition, even 10th house. Um, yeah, I, for some reason I first thought of 11th house, but it's also 10th house. Um, like 10th house is career, um, which in a way is achievements, but 11th house is really like rewards for the achievements that you do and like recognition. So yeah, 10th, 11th house, but more so 11th in a way. Um, good for you. I feel like it probably has to do, it, it probably is connected to the thing that you did before where you had to let go of something and embark on something new um, that started spiritual and emotional growth that could propel you towards the uh, achievement and self-discipline um, that you're now being recognized for. So that's really great. Just kind of bask in your glory, do your thing. You know, I don't even see you as having to do anything special for this. But just do your thing. Um, you'll achieve something great this month, and I'm really glad for that. Um, huh. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Especially with the recognitions piece, um, the sun is in your seventh house, Mercury is in your seventh house, so you're gonna have a lot of interactions with relationships, um, and people will be able to see you when you do that. Um, I wonder what your 10th house is. For Sag, it might be Virgo. Yeah, might be Virgo. So the 11th house would be Leo. North node. Oh, shoosh. Okay, well, we could just start with that. Um, uh, what sign are we on? I'm sorry. We just did Sag, so we're on, um, <laughs> um, it's gonna be an Earth sign. Capricorn. Okay. Alright, Capricorn. Nine of Water. Okay. Your wishes come true! Woo, I wish I had confetti coming down. Concerns fade away, a love of life. If you haven't been seeing the other signs, everybody's been getting really great cards this month. Everybody, like, 
if not one great card, then two great cards. Everybody's been getting really great cards. So I'm glad that your wishes come true um, right now in this moment. Um, concerns fade away in the love of life. Uh, let me know what happened. That sounds really interesting. Um, yeah. Now we're going to look into the next month, next 30 days for you, Capricorn. Okay. Ten of water, a contented and rewarding family life. Your emotional and material needs are met. Trustworthy relationships. Um, Virgo got the same card. Makes me wonder if there's anything going on with like Pluto. Of course the moon making trines to Pluto is always there. I could look for it really quickly. Um, that will happen at the beginning of the month. Like... June 2nd, and also June 21st, Trines to Pluto. Um, yeah, since you guys are like Earth, uh, both Earth signs, and like, um, not so much family life, but like having your emotional and material needs met, and even having trustworthy relationships, I think is very Plutonian. Just like having that, um, inner piece of psychology. I don't know, maybe it's a stretch, but whatever. So anyway, contented and rewarding family lives. Um, that's really cool. I'm really glad for you. Emotional material needs are met. Um, yeah, I don't know, I feel like this is really self-explanatory. Um, it seems like this with this card, like, I mean, there's this like one mermaid that it's just dancing in the background but these other two mermaids are like handing you chalices so it's kind of like you know congrats cheers to you um they seem like they're serving so it's like you know i see them as like offering you wine you know congrats all is well um you if you have something to celebrate maybe you want to celebrate it with friends and family um if anything comes up that's worth celebrating. Um, or even if you don't have anything to celebrate, plan a plan a party. Um, so that was Capricorn. Aquarius. We're we're doing the home stretch, guys. Ooh, this is long. Okay, Aquarius. The wheel again. Who else got this? Libra got this. Archangel Michael, time of positive change, a, a situation suddenly moves forward, fortune's on your side. Ooh, cool. Um, time has to change, situation suddenly moves forward. I mean, that's great. Uh, the same thing I said with Libra, you wanna like see what the astrology is saying to do and like go with it. Um, whatever has been, you know, whatever blockage you've been having recently is probably just gonna dissipate. Um, and things are going good. Yeah, this is like a, you know, the pendulum naturally swings. Uh, the pendulum of like life naturally swings from good to bad to good to bad. Things are not always, um, good. Um, they swing from good to bad, good to bad. So I see things are swing, swinging good for you now. Um, at least for the moment that you read this. So, now, we're going to uh, give you a 30 minute. Okay, 30 minute. Ace of water, falling in love. Ooh, okay, sorry. Falling in love with the resurgence of a relationship. Spiritual growth and enhanced intuition, a new home. I see this as coming into um, love and dating, refreshed, smarter, ready, prepared. You know, I just see this as like so many good things. Uh, falling in love with the resurgence of a relationship, spiritual growth, and enhanced intuition, a new home. Um, so also some fourth house stuff, but also just kind of even being more... Um, being more sure of yourself. Uh, yeah. Good things. Falling in love, the resurgence of relationships, spiritual growth, and enhanced intuition in a new home. I'm trying to see what more I can glean 
from there. Um, yeah, all around feeling good. I just expect you to feel really good this month, um, as everyone is. But I guess for you, you may even find more happiness on your own or like um, with a lover like in a secluded situation as opposed to like... So for example, like if you're dating, you have the option of like going out to the movies or like going out to a bar, which is very social or party, like very open, like with other people around. Or you could just stay home, Netflix and chill, not necessarily have sex, but you know, have sex if you want. But like, <laughs> you know, like stay home or even, even a museum depending on the kind of museum, can be kind of secluded. Like, I went to the museum, I live in DC, so there's the Smithsonian. I went to the Museum of African Art. That was empty. Empty, nobody was there. <laughs> but if you go to, um, even like, if you go to like the African American, so they just opened the African American Museum of, wait, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, that's what it's called. Um, it's packed. You can't even like all, most of the museums in, um, most of the museums in DC are free. Um, but you, since they just opened the NMAACHC, that's what they call it, um, it's so hard to get a ticket. It's just, anyway. Yeah, I see this as like quiet time for you this month. It is water, you know, water is very spiritual. Um, so yeah spiritual growth and enhanced intuition um consider chakra balancing if you want i feel like you would like that this month um your chakras may already be balanced so like recharging your chakras some great stones for that um okay so now we're on pisces already oh hi pisces <laughs> Okay, um, let me not act like I'm three years old. <laughs> okay, Pisces. Ooh. Might as well take this one out. King of Earth. I think we've had this before. Yeah, Taurus got this one. King of Earth. Generous, professional, responsible, practical. <laughs> A successful time. Confidently accept the opportunities you're offered. Uh, the Midas touch. I thought he was holding a baby in his hand. Okay, well, um, he's not, but I do see a rainbow in the background. That's kind of nice. Oh uh, yeah, June is Pride Month. Let me just zero in on that rainbow. Okay. Um, yeah, you may even really enjoy being around nature this month. There's a lot of like, there's like a, you know, a lot of flowers, there's a butterfly, he has wings. Um, he's in a forest, a lot of these people are in forests, but anyway. Uh, you may really enjoy being around nature. Um, things are probably going to go very well in your job. Uh, I think, is Gemini your 10th house? No, Gemini is your 4th house. Yeah, Gemini is your 4th house. Your 10th house is Sag. I yeah, your 10th house is Sag. Um, which is Saturn. Um, so you may really be going through the Saturn aspects well. Um, I'm not. What if I'm like wrong about all these things? I'm not though. It's just that like I don't usually do them in my head. I usually double check, but like I feel like at this point, you know it. <laughs> Comment if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, successful time. Yeah. Confidently accept the opportunities you're offered. Damn. Is this your first or second card? I don't know. I think this is your first card. Yeah. I think this is your first card. Crap. Okay. Well, anyway. Things are going well. Let's just go and give you a second card. If it's your third card, whatever. Um, oh, okay, this one just hopped out. The sun, that's a really great card. Um, Archangel Uriel, happy outcome, exclamation point. Brilliant, brilliant news, uh, sorry, brilliant new ideas that lead to success. Have confidence in yourself. Um, yeah, this is very sunshiny and um, I, I see this as um, you may even like if you're feeling low at all or if you want to re-energize, um, the sun is in your fourth house. Um, so be around families, you know, like visit home if you want, you know, if that gives you energy, if that gives you happiness. But happy outcome, with it, whatever you're dealing with right now, it's going to go well, it's going to have a happy outcome. Um, and yeah, act on those 
dare I say impulsive ideas. Mars is trying you. So like Mars is in your fifth house. Um, so you may feel like um, starting a new passion project. Um, so, I, so I say go ahead because Mars will give you the energy to do that and it'll all come out well. All right, now, whew, that was long. We're gonna do the reading for everyone for right now and for June. So for right now, what is everybody feeling? King of Fire. Motivational, idealistic, ambitious, and charismatic. It makes sense, everybody got good cards. Everybody got good cards. Focus, 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 communicate with vision and be a leader, advice from someone creative. Seek out a mentor. Um, that's so invaluable for whatever you wanna do, especially in career, but kind of in life in general. Seek out a role model, a mentor. Um, their advice can be invaluable and what the impact they'll have on your life is, is also invaluable. It could definitely lead you to success um, and help you be a leader. Um, communicate with vision. Be, I, I don't know of leaders who didn't have role models, really. Um, and like I said, advice from someone creative. Okay, cool. Um, now, and I feel like that Mars energy will be very passionate in, in Cancer. It's not like if Mars was in Aries, I'd just be like a, like somebody like, you know, dowsing a cigarette butt on your forehead. You know what I mean? Just like burning. <laughs> But it's in Cancer, so it's nice and passionate and soft and sweet and, you know. Ugh, okay. So, for the next 30 months, how are we feeling? The High Priestess. Very nice. Archangel Hanium. Listen to your intuition. Have patience. Consider carefully what you want before acting. There was a, um, I think it was Mars Square Jupiter. Yeah, have patience, listen to your intuition, consider carefully what you want before acting. Yeah, make sure that, to me this is, I think I mentioned Law of Attraction like twice. Um, if, the, if you want the universe to give you what you want, you have to be very clear about what you want and you have to be very clear about what you're asking for. If you're not sure, I mean, again, prime example, I got this from Jack Canfield's book on the Law of Attraction. Um, when you when you want to ask the universe for something, be very clear. Be very clear. You don't go into Starbucks saying, "Can I get a coffee?" That's rude. It's dumb. Like people look at you like, "What do you mean?" <laughs> you say, "Can I go? Can I get like a tall chocolate frappuccino with two pumps of vanilla?" I don't really know how these things work. I don't. I don't go to Starbucks that much. Sorry. But like you, you're very specific. You you say the size. You say the exact flavor, you say whatever extra things you want, um, or whatever you don't want on it, you know? You don't go to like McDonald's or Burger King and say, can I get a burger? You say, can I get a number 12 with extra fries? You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the whole point. You have to be very specific. If you tell the universe, oh, well, you know, I kind of, I just want this and you don't, you know, you're not specific, the universe is just going to give you that very ambiguous idea of what you thought you wanted. Um, and I think the additional benefit of being clear about what you want is self-clarity. So like, if you're, if you give the universe an ambiguous thing, you may get exactly what you asked for, but realize that you don't want it because you didn't think through it enough. Okay, so whew, that was very long. Um, not gonna lie, I don't like the two card situation, only because I kept losing count and um, stressful. Um, but if you guys like it, I am your servant. I'll do what you want. Um, let me know if you enjoyed having two cards pulled or if you just want one card for the 30 days. Um, also, if you want extra readings by me or Michael, visit thepeacedealer.com. Thank you for watching this entire thing. Even if you skipped around to your sign, that's fine. I won't judge you. I do the same thing. Um, uh, that's all. That's all I have. All right. Bye.